proclaim the joyful message that our God is coming to earth. Let the valleys be filled and the mountains made low, preparing for his holy birth. He will come in the spirit of wisdom to bring the world justice and right. The poor and the lowly will know him, for the Lord will be their light. Proclaim the joyful message that our God is coming to earth. Let the valleys be filled and the mountains made low, preparing for his holy birth. Let the valleys be filled and the mountains made low, preparing for his holy birth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather together as God's family. Even though we're in separate places, in different places, we are united in Holy, by the Holy Spirit. We are spiritually united with one another. God is everywhere. God is present in your home. God is present here in this church where we are celebrating. God is present within each one of us. And so God's loving presence truly brings us all together. He never abandons his children. He loves us too much to ever let us be away from him. He keeps his eye on us because he loves us forever. He's created us to be forever with him. And so we rejoice in our faith in the Lord's presence, uniting us together as we begin this celebration of God's love for us all and our love for one another in obedience to God's command. We begin, though, by asking God to forgive us for the times that we have failed to love, for our lack of love, our selfishness, for the harm and hurt we've caused others. God knows our sins better than we do, but he also knows his mercy, wipes them all out. Lord Jesus, you came to announce the good news of our Heavenly Father's love for us and His never-ending mercy towards us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you welcomed sinners. You ate with them and freely and generously forgave them for their sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our Lord and our brother, leading us to eternal happiness through the generous forgiveness of our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, your name forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from a vote. No ear has ever heard no eye ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are saved. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up 
to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Every year we begin a new church liturgical year, the new year, the new liturgical year of the church on the first Sunday of Advent. Last Sunday was the, the last Sunday in the liturgical year of the church, the Feast of Christ the King. And now this Sunday, first Sunday of Advent, as we begin a new church year, the readings for the first Sunday of Advent are concerned with the end times, the return of Jesus in glory. We know Advent comes from the word, the Latin meaning the coming. And so Advent, we have four Sundays of Advent. They're always celebrating the coming. We, we will emphasize on the, the subsequent uh, th third, second, third, and fourth Sundays, the coming of Jesus as we prepare to celebrate his birth. 
But the first Sunday, we concern ourselves with the coming in glory at the end of time. But Jesus' message was not one of doom and gloom, but one of good news. Not bad news, good news. Jesus said, I haven't come to condemn the world. I've come to save the world. And I have spoken to give you my joy and to make your joy complete. And so Jesus tells us, do not live in fear, little flock. It pleases your father to give you the kingdom. It makes your father happy to give you the kingdom. So Jesus never calls us to live in fear, but to live in trust and hope. And he calls us to love, to be like, like God who is love, to become more and more compassionate like God, to become more and more generous, more and more loving and caring like God is, as God is. We are created in the image of God. And so he tells us to watch, not to watch out, but to watch. He is always coming to us. Be on the alert to serve him in your sisters and brothers. Jesus instructs us to look forward to seeing him face to face with joyful hope while engaging in good deeds. At the last, the last teaching parable of Jesus in Matthew's gospel, which we heard last Sunday, Jesus tells us, be on the alert. Who, the least important persons that you encounter in life, help one another, care for one another. He gives samples about how we can do that. Feeding the hungry, giving thirsties to someone, giving drink to someone thirsty, welcoming a stranger, visiting the sick, visiting in prison. But these are just examples of being on the alert. God is always coming and we are always having the opportunity of experiencing God's eternal happiness by knowing what it is to love, to care for one another. So while we wait for the Lord's coming, Jesus instructs us to use our time and our talents and our treasure, everything God has given us to do his work, making the world better by being instruments of his peace and love and joy. And Jesus brings us good news that God loves us. How comforting it is to know. You know, when, to know, to know that we have a God whom we can really rely on and trust. That's, that's what Jesus taught us when he said to call God our Abba, our Papa, our Dad. He wants us to see God in an intimate way. To use us, the, the word that a little three-year-old child would use to address his father. He wants us to know that our Father loves us. The Word of God teaches us our God loves us as Father and as Mother, as a mother not forgetting the baby, nursing in her breast. Jesus talks about gathering his, like a, a mother hen gathers her chicks beneath her wings. God loves us. Jesus tells us, look at your own, the loving fathers in your own midst. What father in your midst, a loving father, would give his child a poisonous snake or a deadly scorpion? If your fathers, with all their sins and faults and limitations, if they know how to give good things to their children, how much more your Father in heaven. Jesus doesn't teach us to be afraid of God, but to know God truly loves us. It's comforting to know that God loves us with an, as Pope John Paul II, St. John Paul II said, God loves us with an everlasting, unconditional love. So one thing we don't have to be anxious about is God's constant love. And that should bring us a measure of peace and comfort. You might remember a story about St. Francis Xavier playing billiards with a couple of his friends. And, one, and the question came up, one of them said, what would you do if you knew the Lord was returning in one hour? And Francis replied, I would just keep on playing billiards. They were playing billiards. I would just go on doing that. Was Francis, did he say that because he was convinced he was so sinless and righteous? He didn't have to be worried? No. All true saints are very much aware of their unworthiness. But Francis simply had complete trust in the good news of Jesus about our Father's love. Francis wasn't spiritually neurotic. He knew the one that was coming was the one who loved him more than anyone else could ever love him. 
more than he could ever love himself. As Pope Benedict XVI said, people should not be afraid of God, thinking God is always ready to punish, but rather they should love God because God is always ready to forgive. He said, Pope Benedict XVI said, God is not a relentless sovereign who condemns the guilty, but a loving father whom we must love not out of fear of punishment, but because of his goodness. Pope Benedict XVI said, God is always ready to reveal himself as merciful and compassionate. God's justice is his mercy. Yes, we are sinners. We have, and some, we, sometimes we can be so great, so horribly remorseful of our sins and faults and failures. But God is a big daddy and a big mom. He knows how to take care of his kids. He knows how to correct us when we misbehave. He knows how to wash us up when we get dirty. He knows how to fix us up and heal us when we hurt ourselves. But he never destroys us. He never stops loving us. And Pope Benedict XVI said, the fear of the Lord then should be understood in terms of awe rather than dread. The fear of the Lord means we're in awe of God. That's the gift of the Spirit, to be in awe of God who is love, who is the most unselfish, loving of all, loving entity, of it being of anybody. Jesus talks about when you see me, when you see me doing, you see God the Father doing, he's getting on his knees, washing the feet of his apostles. He said, I do what I see the Father doing. You see me, you see the Father. Jesus humbles himself. He shows how God gives himself completely. Jesus empties himself of his divinity. This is why we're in awe of God. No one is more loving. No one is more unselfish. No one is more giving. And God knows how to take care of us. So in contemplation, Pope Benedict XVI said, in contemplation of the Almighty, one does not experience cringing fear. One who knows Jesus and his teaching does not experience cringing fear, but a sincere and serious respect that prompts genuine and active adherence. Jesus does not call us to live in fear, becoming obsessed with his second coming or the moment we will see him face to face. He simply calls us to be good, to be loving, to be generous and forgiving, to be kind, to be faithful to the people that he places in our lives and that we encounter every day, not only in person, but through our prayers. Spiritually, we can encounter the whole world. So let us, let us uh, remember the great song we sang in the beginning, Proclaim the joyful message, joyful message, that our God is coming to earth, the one who loves us more than we could ever love ourselves. And in his love for us, his love conquers all. And his love for us, he changes us to be like him, to be perfected in the image of God, in whose image we have been created. Peace be with you. And also with you. Let us now profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we bring our special prayers and petition to our loving Father in heaven for ourselves, our own needs, and for the needs of all the people of the world in love for one another. That our celebration of the season of Advent may prepare us to welcome Jesus in all the wonderful ways he comes to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may have the wisdom to recognize the shortness of our lives and use the time given to us in greater service of God and neighbor. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will guide and inspire everyone who is working to curtail and eradicate the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and all who suffer may experience the loving presence of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, that they may know the joy and peace of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, we ask the Lord to hear and answer our personal prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you know what we need better than we do. But hear our prayers petition for ourselves and for all your children everywhere. And help us by your Holy Spirit to be more and more faithful to your command. The command that Jesus gave us to love one another and to extend your loving care to all whose lives we touch in our words, in our deeds, in our prayers for others, and in the manner of our life. We pray to you, Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O oh Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from your, among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Father, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all of them. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died. In your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With confidence, we continue praying to the loving Father of all of us and of all the people of the world everywhere, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Father, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Although those who are watching the video are not able to take and eat, do not feel that you're deprived of the Lord's presence. He comes to you always and is with you right now. The good news of Jesus is that God is always loving us. He never stops loving us. He never stops forgiving us. And we are God's children. Through the prophet Isaiah, and so through the prophet Isaiah, God says, the word of God says, could the mother forgive her baby she just gave birth to? The baby nursing in her breast? Even if she could forget, I will never forget you. So God is truly with you. But we look forward to the day when we can come together and share in the breaking of the bread. For the sacrament of the Eucharist truly proclaims in sign and truly effects our oneness in Christ. As we say, may we who partake of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one. When Jesus, at the Last Supper, prayed to the Father he, and gave the, the Eucharist to his apostles and shared with them and taught them what it was all about and washing their feet, giving them the command to love one another, telling them this was the one mark of his disciples, his students who understand his teaching is that they love one another. Jesus prayed, Father, I pray that they may be one as we are one, that their unity may be complete. I living in them, you living in me. So even though you aren't able to come, we look forward when you can come together and we can share in the breaking of the bread of the Eucharist. But even now, don't be deprived of the Lord's presence. Where there is love, God is there. John's letter makes it very clear. Those who abide in love are in God and God is in them. So you pray for us and pray for our sisters and brothers, pray for the whole world. And that's an act of love. And God is in you, and you are in God, and God is truly present. Let us pray. <clears throat> May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in everything. Thanks be Amen. to God. Proclaim the joyful message that our God is coming to earth. Let the valleys be filled and the mountains made low, preparing for his holy birth. He will come in the spirit of wisdom to bring the world justice and right. The poor and the lowly will know him, for the Lord will be their light. Proclaim the joyful message that our God is coming to earth. Let the valleys be filled and the mountains made low, preparing for his holy birth. Soon God's creatures will all live together. The wolf will be guest of the lamb. The calf will walk next to the lion and be led by the child's hand. Proclaim the joyful message that our God is coming to earth. Let the valleys be filled and the mountains made low, preparing for his holy birth. Let the valleys be filled and the mountains made low, preparing for his holy birth.